Good morning to everyone. I'm grateful for this day. Why? Because this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to know that I'm excited about what God is going to do today and I want you to be as well. So I want you at this time take this moment to make sure you do two things. I want you first of all share some love today. I want you to make sure that as people are coming in, I want you to click on their name and simply spread some love today. Share some love. Tell them I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. And then I want you to also share this live. Click the share button right now as we're believing God is going to do the miraculous on today. And we don't want anybody that you're connected to to miss this. So I'm looking for, I want 25 of you to make sure you click the share button right now. At least 25 of you. Come on, click the share button. Make sure that you understand this virtual space uh, warrants you to be a virtual evangelist by simply clicking, clicking the, sharing bu the share button even right now. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer as we go to the Lord's throne of grace. We're believing that prayer still changes things and we're believing God for what he's going to do on today. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, how we give you praise, give you honor, give you glory for keeping us yet another week. Lord, how we praise you because you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We give you glory because, God, above you there is no other. Lord, we praise you because you have not only created the heavens and the earth, but, God, you created us for such a time as this. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of calamity, God, we thank you that you keep on keeping us. Thank you that you preserved us. Thank you that you continue, God, to keep your hands on us. And for that, we are eternally grateful. I pray, God, for those who are watching under the sign of my voice, God, I pray that those, oh God, who are going through seasons of sickness, we pray for healing of every disease. I pray for healing for every ailment, for every ache, for every pain, God, for every, for everything that they may be going through. I pray, God, that you would divinely heal them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. I pray, God, for supernatural, supernatural comfort for those, oh God, who mourn, who have lost loved ones. I'm praying. Uh, for uh, for the Scott family, God, I'm praying for the Hughes family, God, I'm praying, God, for those who, God, who have lost mothers this week, who've lost fathers, who have lost children, God, I'm praying, God, that you cover our children, God, as even in the city of Birmingham, God, we've seen many children get killed and shot within the last week. I'm praying that you would provide a hedge of protection around them, keep them safe from hurt, harm, and all danger, God, I thank you that we know you're able to do anything but fail. So have your way on today. Move by your power, move by your spirit among your people. Open up our hearts and minds to receive everything that you have in store for us on today. And God, we thank you in advance for what you alone are going to do. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of you this week. We are looking forward to what God is going to do. Listen, I'm beginning a new series uh, entitled, You're Going to Live to see it happen. I'm believing that with all the things we've seen going, uh, going on around us, with all the deaths that we've seen and all the things that we have experienced, I'm believing by faith that you ought to make a declaration today. I want you to type it in the chat that I'm going to live to see it happen. I'm going to live to see whatever God has for me, every promise that God made, everything that I've been praying for. I'm believing by faith that you're going to live to see it happen. And so if you would, today I want you to uh, turn with me to Psalm 118, and we're going to read the first verse. Psalm 118, and we're going to read the first verse. Won't you say amen once you've gathered your smart device, your Bible, and your pen, your paper. I'm going to, I want to just preach the word today. I want to make sure that you get all of this word today. So we're going to read verses 1 through 17. Psalm 118, verses 1 through 17, which simply says these words. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say, 
that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say, that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations compassed about me, and but, the, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They compassed me about, yea, they compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compassed about me like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fail, and that I might fall, excuse me. But the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doth doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. I want to preach from the message today, the subject today, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. Oftentimes our faith is challenged because sometimes there are some things that you've been praying for. There are some things that you have been believing God for that has not been manifested yet. That there's some things that you have been hoping for, hoping and praying for God to do on your behalf, and you have, as of yet, not seen it happen yet. And so it shakes our faith because we, we, we've been praying and believing and believing and praying and crying and worrying and praying and crying and believing, and it still hasn't happened, and it makes your faith get wave it makes your faith waver because you you're saying god if this be your will why hasn't it happened yet but might i suggest to you that before you give up on god because you haven't seen what he's going to do let me suggest before we kick this thing off that sometimes we ought to thank god for what he's already done it is uh, sometimes parents uh, will tell children, here it is, before you ask for more, maybe you ought to finish what you already got. And might I add today that maybe somebody who's watching has been guilty of this, is that maybe, just maybe before you're looking for God to do more on your behalf, before you walk in expectation of what the Lord is going to do, maybe, just maybe, you ought to praise the Lord, here it is, for what you've already seen. Yeah, maybe your belief system shouldn't be shaken because of what you've already seen God do. And, and can I suggest to somebody that now is a good time. Today is a good day to give God some glory, not for what he's going to do, but for what he has already done and for who he has already been. I'm already in the text because as you look at Psalm 118, Psalm 118 begins at the high place. Listen to this. We don't have to wait to the end of the message to celebrate, we can celebrate right here in the beginning. Why? Because it says, oh, give thanks, yes, unto the Lord. Why should we give thanks unto the Lord? Because you've already seen the fact that he is good. 
I wish I had some witnesses that could praise God right off the bat, right? Right as the message is getting started, somebody ought to tell God, thank you and give him thanks. Watch this. If you don't have nothing else to thank him for, if you can't thank him for the stuff that he's going to do, if you haven't seen what God is going to do on your behalf, can you just simply thank God because he is good? God has been good to you. God has been doing great things on your behalf already. If you can't thank God for nothing else, can you praise God? Because he is good. Yes, he is good. Whether you feel good or not, God is good. Whether you going through a bad situation or not, God is good. Somebody ought to praise God even on the Sunday morning that he's been good to me. You ought to testify right now. Talk to your neighbor even now and just say, the Lord been good to me. He's opened some doors for me. He's made ways out of no way for me. God is good. Every day of the week, God is good. When I'm sick, God is good. When I'm well, God is good. When when I'm broke, God is good. When, when I'm rich, God is good. Somebody ought to praise God because God is good. When, I, when I've got a roof over my head, God is good. When I don't have a roof over my head, the Lord is still good. And because not only is he good, but his mercy endures forever. I'm grateful for the fact that not only is God, but God been good to me. How good has he been? He's been so good to me that he gave me mercy. <laughs> Somebody ought to thank God because you recognize that his goodness towards me is nothing compared to his mercy over me. His mercy endures forever. It, it, it goes forever. It doesn't run out. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Somebody ought to thank God because you recognize that I need God's mercy in my life. What is his mercy? Mercy is when God could have cut me off and probably should have cut me off, but mercy said no. It is when I should have been punished, but God withheld it from me when I should have been dead sleeping in my grave but God let me live to see another day shame on you for talking about what what you want from God and God has already given you mercy he says let Israel now say his mercy endures forever he he's been good to you and his mercy has been shown to Israel he has shown even the nation here it is that I can bring you out of bondage into the life of freedom he has shown the house of Aaron that I can give you mercy in the midst of what you're going through. Even through your bloodline, I can still show mercy not only to you, but to your children and your children's children. Somebody ought to praise God that his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear or reverence the Lord say his mercy endures forever. You've seen enough to know that God is good. God is worthy to be praised. You ought to thank God because you know he is good and his mercy endures forever. Now, not only do I need to praise God because he is good and his mercy endures forever, but here's another reason, something you've already seen. Can I already, can I help you with some things you, something else you already seen? He says, in my distress, I called on the Lord and the Lord answered me, here it is, and set me in a large place. Oh, the reason you are to praise God and you are to live life knowing that, that you are to give thanks unto the Lord, even if you haven't seen it yet, is because you've already seen how God handles your tight places. He says, when I was in distress, when I was in a tight spot, when I was in a place where I didn't know which way to go when I didn't have any clue of what was going to happen. When I found myself in a pit, I wasn't pitiful because I called on the Lord. Anybody a witness that I had to learn that when I'm in a tight spot, I couldn't call my friends, couldn't couldn't call my neighbors, couldn't call my family because they couldn't help me because they were in a tight place too. Anybody a witness that before these stimulus checks came out, you was in a tight place. Don't don't act like you ain't been in a tight spot. Spot. But thank God when I was in a tight place, when I was in a small place, the Lord heard me. That's good news because nobody else listened to you, but the Lord heard you and listened to what he did. And he set me 
in a large place. I wish I could help, help five people have a testimony service right now is just look around you right now and thank God that God has set you up in a high place, in a large place. I know you was working a small job before, but, but thank God that God has set you up in a large place. Somebody got promoted in the midst of a pandemic. Somebody got, pros got prosperity in the midst of a pandemic. You ought to praise God that when I was in a tight place, the Lord heard me and set me in a large place. Here's another thing you ought to praise God for. I know you've seen how God handled you while you were in the tight place, but here's something else you've already seen enough of. You've already seen that the Lord is on your side. I'm, I'm in verse six. He says, the Lord is on my side. Therefore, I will not fear. There's somebody who's walking around in life right now and you're afraid of what the future may hold. You're afraid of what could happen. You're afraid of what might happen. But might I suggest to you, when you know the Lord is on your side, you ought to make a declaration that I will not fear. Why? Because I've already seen enough. I, I, I've i already walked through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. When the Lord is on your side, you can tell your neighbor, I've seen enough. I've seen him do it enough times. I've seen him make ways out of no way. I've seen him take me out of a dark place into the marvelous light. You ought to shout, look where he brought me from. I will not fear. Why? What can man do with me? See, see, when, when you know the Lord is on your side, you're not worried about people. Sometimes you can be so worried about people that you lose sight of what you already seen God do. But somebody will make a declaration. I've seen enough. I've seen enough to praise him for because God has already fought my battles. How do you know? He says, the Lord taketh my part with them who help me. God blesses people who bless me. But not only does God bless people that blesses me, but God handles people that can't stand me. Look at what the Bible says uh, in verse seven. He says, it is better to trust in the Lord to put your confidence in man. That there's somebody who's watching that, that recognizes that you learned a long time ago. You've seen how people can mistreat you and the same people that appoint you can disappoint you. The same people that lift you up can tear you down. But is there anybody that can praise God that I've learned? I've seen enough to know that if I put my confidence in the Lord, when I learned to say like the old folks say that I will trust in the Lord till I die. I, I got to praise God even right now in the midst of what I'm going through because. I'm not going to fear people. I'm not afraid of what people may say. I'm not afraid of what the government may do. I'm not going to put my trust in the princes. I'm not going to put my trust in the government or those who are officials, but I will trust in the Lord. He says, not only will I trust in the Lord because I'm not going to fear anybody. He says, but all the nations, uh, they compassed about me, but in the name of the Lord, uh, will I destroy them? You, you got to be so confident in God that no matter what says what comes against you, you ought to praise God that no weapon, yes, formed against you is going to prosper. You ought to praise God and tell somebody it won't work. I, I, I know racism is running rampant in the nation, but though the, though the nation, watch this, compassed about me, watch this, I, I'm still not going to fear because the name of the Lord is going to destroy racism. I know, I know that, that, that watch this, not only do the nations, but they compassed about me. It says, yeah, they compassed about me, but in the name of the Lord, will I destroy it? Whatever comes against me, I'm praising God that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Every tongue that shall rise, I shall condemn it. You ought to praise God. Tell your neighbor, it won't work. No matter what they try to do about you, no matter how many times they've tried to oppress you and suppress you, I will not be depressed. Why? Because the name of the Lord shall destroy it. Whatever is coming against you, you ought to praise God that there's a name that's above of every name. I wish I had some witnesses on the Sunday morning that at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow and every tongue has got to confess. I'm not worried about what the COVID may do because the name of the Lord will destroy it. I'm not worried about what people may try because the name of the Lord, I will destroy whatever attempt and attack comes against me. But listen to this. Not only that, but I, I want to praise God because the Bible says uh, in, in verse 14 that the Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. 
When it is, I was at my weakest place. What I've seen God do, anybody can testify that I've seen God in my weakest place. I've seen God become my strength. I've seen God give me strength when I didn't know how I was going to make it. When I was powerless, God made me powerful. When it was that, that I was weak, the joy of the Lord became my strength. Listen to this. Somebody ought to testify that there's been times where I wasn't happy. I was actually sad. But but the happiness is temporary. But somebody ought to praise God that this joy that I have, the, the world didn't give and the world can't take away. You ought to praise God that God has given me strength. I've seen him do it. I've seen enough to know that when I'm weak, the Lord makes me strong. But not only does he give me strength, but the Lord is my song. Somebody ought to praise God that I'm not crying the blues no more, but I'm but God has given me a new song. You ought to thank God that in the midst of what I'm going through, I, I can praise God and say that, uh, that I don't feel no way is tired. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me, yes, that the road would be easy, but here's your shout. I don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you right now. You ought to praise God that God has given me no uh, a new song. God has given me a new song that says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You ought to praise God that that you are that, that, that you got a new song that says amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found here's your holler but I was blind but now I see God has given me a song he is my strength and my song and has become my salvation somebody ought to testify even on a Sunday morning that, that I recognize that I've been in some places and I've been in some situations and, and I didn't know how I was going to make it through. But I've seen enough to know that God is able to come to my rescue. Somebody ought to thank God even right now that, that God has come to my rescue and become my salvation. Somebody ought to give God the praise and, and give God glory because what you recognize is that in the midst of what I've been going through, in the midst of what I've been dealing with, I, I've seen God become my salvation. You ought to thank God even right now that, that I'm believing by faith that the worst is over and the best is yet to come. You ought to give God glory and give God praise. <laughs> yeah, because the Bible says that when you've seen enough to thank God in advance, when, when you've seen enough to give God praise, you you, you ought to tell yourself and have a meeting with yourself based on what you have seen. Yeah, that self, no matter what comes my way, yeah, I, I got to make a declaration that what I've come to the conclusion is that I shall not die, but I shall live. I said I shall live. Yes, and instead, I'll declare the works of the Lord. Somebody in here ought to be a witness that I've made a decision after all I've seen, after all that I've been through. I still got my joy. Is there anybody in here that can praise God from the comfort of your own home? That I believe that what's coming is better than what's been. And I've got that belief based on what I've seen already. I've seen enough to know God is able. Because I've seen the lightning flashing. And I've heard the thunder roll. i felt sin break and dashing. Trying to conquer my soul. But in the midst of it all, I heard, yes, who I heard, the voice from heaven telling me, still fighting on. The Lord, He promised never to leave me, no, never, never to leave me alone. So you ought to praise God that the Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me, 
to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and they fell. The war should rise up against me, and this shall not fear, though an host shall encamp round about me. My heart shall be confident, because one thing have I desired from the Lord, and that I may seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold his beauty, and to inquire in his tabernacle. For in the time, the time of trouble, the Lord, he shall hide me. In the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies. So I'll sing, yes, I'll sing praises unto the Lord for the Lord is good somebody here ought to be a witness that I've seen enough I've seen enough and if you've seen enough you ought to tell them thank you yeah thank you yeah thank you because you've been mighty good to me you've been better to me than I've been to myself you ought to give God glory give God praise I'm expecting God to do it because I've already seen enough for him to give him glory I've already seen enough to give him praise ain't he worthy then you ought to shout yes you ought to shout yes yeah yes you ought to give God glory I said, you ought to give God praise even now. If you know that God has already done enough, if he doesn't do anything else for me, he's already done enough. Today, if you're watching today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to offer you this moment, this time to give him your life and your life won't be the same in Jesus name. I want you to know there's a simple way to do it. You just simply say this prayer, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by your grace. I believe that you died on the cross just for my sins and you rose on the third day with with all power in your hands. Come into my life and my life will never be the same in Jesus name. Amen. If you pray this prayer, prayer, we're believing by faith that now you are part of God's family of faith. I want you to prepare now to give as the Lord has blessed you. There are three ways in which you can give. The first way is through our online website, which is www.stjameseastlake.com. The second way is through mail, which is 7309. Oporto Avenue, Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. And the third way is through Cash App, which is dollar sign St. James E.L. Dollar sign St. James E.L. Remember, you can't be God giving no matter how you try. Listen, this Wednesday, we're continuing our Bible study series, which is on the power of connections. Listen, if you missed last Wednesday, I want you to go back and watch last Wednesday so that you'll be ready for what God's going to do this Wednesday. This Wednesday. We're continuing the series on the power of connections. We've been looking at how important who you're connected to is. And this Wednesday, uh, we're going to uh, look at having problems with your Wi-Fi connection. Problems with your Wi-Fi connection. You don't want to miss this Wednesday uh, as we continue the series, The Power of Connections. Listen, I want you to make sure that you, that you begin to look forward to what God is going to do. But listen, in order to look forward, sometimes it requires you to look back and just simply say, I've seen enough to believe if he did it before, he can do it again. I want you to share this message, share this word right now. Somebody needs to know that God has already done enough for you to praise him for what he's already do. I shall live and not die. Somebody ought to make a declaration over yourself, over your family, over your children, that we shall live and not die. But what we have to do is stand and declare the words of the Lord. Hadn't God been good to you, then you ought to tell somebody that God been good to me. My name is Pastor Richard Holman. Remember, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. God keep you as I pray.